Welcome. In this video, we will discuss an example for the WKB or semi-classic approximation when we are using the connection formulas. Now, this is the example when we have a potential well with no vertical walls. So the situation is basically what I'm showing you right here. We have some potential that will be sloping downwards and then will slope up. So we have this well, but unlike before, we don't have this infinite wall on either side and we don't have just one side sloping up, which is something that we have also seen. So we have that we have these two points when the energy meets the potential. So the first one, let's call it x1 and the second one x2. Those are our turning points. One of them happens on a downward slope, the other one happens in an upward slope. So recall the formulas that we used, that we found recently, and we will use them to determine something, there are some conditions for the energy without having to say a single thing about the potential itself. So the results that we found previously, if you don't know where this came from, I encourage you to go watch the, the videos where I derived them. I will put the links in the description down below. So this is the case for an upwards slope and this is the case for a downward slope. Now notice that this expression with the sign is valid if x is smaller than the turning point that is going upwards and this other expression is valid for the region where x is greater. So let me show you. So this is the upwards slope. So what I just showed you is valid for this part. Now in this region, right, when we are um, greater than x2, which is our turning point, our wave function looks like this exponential. And to the left, which is on this side, we are in the x smaller than x2 situation. So our wave function looks like this sign right there. Now, in the case for the downward slope, we also have two results. And we have the situation where x is smaller than the turning point, which is this case, right, when we are on this region. And we have the case when x is greater than the turning point, which is also this region, right, Ex extending, um, right, we can go all the way up to there. So those are our two cases. And notice that both of our cases between x1 and x2 have to be the same. Only up to x2, because after x2, this wave changes, and before x1, the other wave changes. So they are, they are only the same between x1 and x2, but that would give us a lot of information. Now notice that I wrote d prime down here and d up there, because of course they are different constants of normalization. So within the region x1 and x2, what do we have? We have, let's say, psi, um, let's call this psi up, right? The one that's going upwards. This is, this is some constant d times the square root of the momentum and then times sine of one over h bar integral from, this is x all the way to x2. And then we have momentum dx prime plus pi over four. And then we have the expression for psi downwards of x, which will be two d prime over the square root of p of x and then we have sine of basically the same thing, except that it goes um, from x1 to x. Okay, so I'm just writing it here so that it becomes very, very apparent. So these two expressions will have to become equal. They have to be the same in our region between x1 and x2. Or, right, basically what that says is that um, actually, I don't know if I want to write it again. I'm going to see if I can copy it. So this has to be equal. Just take it quickly to this. Okay. So now 
um, of course, the twos are already the same. We want the signs to be equal. Now, we will do a little bit of a trick in just a moment, but assuming that d is equal to d prime, because in the end, if we want both wave functions to be equal, then we need d to be equal to d prime, right? And we know that that is the case because in that wave region, they are equal. So now for this expression to be the same, the arguments of sine must be the same. Let's call this theta two and this theta one. So if we want the signs to be equal, we need their arguments to be equal. But of course, since sine is cyclic and it has a period of two pi, then what we will do is that we will say, okay, they have to be equal up to this amount n pi. Why n pi and not 2n pi? Well, because either one of these can shift n pi in one direction. So going n pi is going to already give us all the information that we need. Going for 2 pi would be redundant. Okay, um, so this is the idea. However, if we do it, we're going to be met with a bit of a difficult situation. So let me show you what I mean. So this is 1 over h bar x to x2 p of x prime dx prime plus pi over 4. This is equal um, to 1 over h bar interrupt from x1 to x p of x prime dx prime plus pi over 4. And this, of course, plus n pi. So basically, if you do this, um, we will get some integral equation. And it's just, it's not particularly simple. So we will do a little bit of a trick. We will say, all right, let's redefine d prime as minus d prime. So basically, I multiply by minus 1 times minus 1 or by minus 1 squared. Basically, I get two minus signs. So I multiply by minus one times minus one. That is one, it doesn't change anything. One of those minus signs, I will put into the sign because I know that minus sine of theta is equal to sine of minus theta. That doesn't look good at all, so minus theta, there we go. So one of those minuses, I will take and put it into the sign. So it is minus that and also minus this pi over four. And then I have a minus outside, which as I mentioned, we can simply put into d prime because d prime is any constant, right? And, or if you rather, you can say that d has to be equal to minus d prime, doesn't matter. It's the same outcome. So now, we write down here minus this thing and minus pi over four. And why is this so useful? Because now if we put the integrals together, we get one over h bar integral from x1 to x of pi, uh, the momentum x prime dx prime plus integral from x to x2 of the exact same thing. So what we can do is change the limits of the integral and go from x1 to x2. And we basically combined both of our integrals into just one integral, which makes everything much, much better. And now we can subtract this, put it on the right hand side and factor out pi. So we get uh, n minus two pi over four, which is one half times pi. And finally, we multiply by h bar. Uh, there we go. And this is our result. So this is as far as we can go without giving, giving uh, any concrete example. Um, but here, all you have to do is just plug in the particular value of the momentum that you might have, right, to m v minus e and you integrate and you can immediately find the condition for the energy, right? This is a E minus V or V minus E, depending on the situation, of course. Um, but yeah, so this is the condition. And as you can see, this works for any potential that is 
uh, of this kind and it's going to be very very useful so another in another equation or formula to put into your repertoire for the WKB approximation. So I hope that this was useful to you. If it was, please make sure to leave a like on the video, comment and subscribe, and maybe consider checking out my Patreon. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.